Hello and welcome everyone to the Gearing Up for CES webinar. We're really excited for you to join us today. First and foremost, congratulations to you on your acceptance to the College of Engineering Applied Science. We're very excited to have you here in the fall and we cannot wait to see you. Just some quick introductions first. My name is Costina Luke. I'm one of the admissions counselors within the CAS undergraduate recruitment and enrollment team. Hi everyone, my name is Clayton Tritty. I'm also an admissions counselor within the College of Engineering and Applied Science undergraduate enrollment office. And if you've never been to our office before, um, I do recommend stopping by. On your first week of school, if you have any questions, you need help with directions, do not hesitate to come by our office. That picture right there, that's actually Baldwin Hall, and that red arrow is pointing right at our office. So as soon as you walk in through do um, double doors, we're located right on your right hand side. Unable to join us, but definitely a part of our team is also Alex Van Fossen. Uh, she's also a member of our admissions counselor team, and she's as just as great a resource as either of us. Um, so we're, all three of us are here to support and encourage you throughout your years here at CEAS. All right, so jumping into what we're actually covering for this webinar, we have a lot to talk about. We'll cover everything from your orientation, things that you should pack, housing in fall semester, what you will do for books, first day of classes, study resources, campus resources, um, your Bearcat cars, food, and student events. So we have a lot. When it comes to orientation, I know Clayton and I have received a ton of questions about what orientation is going to look like this summer, what are the next steps, how is it going to be. Um, I'll be honest with you, our Bearcat Bound orientation, this is our first time going virtual with it, so I really appreciate you all being patient with us and being connected with us. So in regards to what you should be doing right now, our orientation checklist includes completing the math placement test. Yes. Every CAS student must complete the math placement test. Every CAS student. The only way that you will not have to take the math placement test is if you've already taken CCP courses at UC in the past and you've taken the math placement test in the past. Some frequent questions I get regarding the math placement test is how often do you get to take it? Um, we do allow retakes for the math placement test, but we do not recommend taking it more than around three times. The score that you're aiming for is a 750. The 750 will place you into calculus one. The highest the math placement test can place you into is calc one. If you're looking for any studying resources, um, any resources to prep you for the math placement test, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. We have a giant list of resources that we have to help prepare you for the MPT. When you're taking the MPT, we do ask that you do not use any calculators for the exam. And that's because our calculus course at UC does not allow you to take a calculator. So it's our best indicator for where to place you in calculus for your college career. I will mention that when it comes to where to place you for your math courses, your advisor will not only use the MPT, but they'll also use your AP classes, CCP credits, what classes you took in high school, as well as your ACT, SAT score. So a lot of things are factored in when deciding where to place you for the calculus course. I think the only last thing a lot of questions, a lot of students ask us is when do they need to take the MPT by? Um, ASAP, <laughs> that is when you should take the math placement test. Ideally, the very, very last minute that you can take the MPT is before you meet with your academic advisor, but we recommend taking it way before then, so that way if you need to take a retake, you're, you have time to take the retake for you. The other thing's a pre-advising survey. You should have received an email with the link for the pre-advising survey. If you're having difficulty finding that link or if you're not sure if you completed it yet, feel free to reach out to Clayton and I and we can look that up for you. And then the next thing is our orientation Canvas course. So this is our online orientation course. It's located on Canvas, which for the website, if you don't know it, it's uc.instructor.com. And on the orientation Canvas course, there are completely nine modules that you must go through. A very frequent question that we receive is when do you get to meet with your academic advisor in order to schedule your fall classes? You must thoroughly complete modules one through five before you can schedule an appointment with your academic advisor. So modules one through five, full completion of those. And in module four, it actually tells you how you can schedule an appointment with your advisor. So you are actually the one that is reaching out and scheduling the appointment. Your advisor will not be the one that is emailing you to schedule the appointment. The way that you schedule an appointment is through Starfish. 
And again, like I mentioned, module four will go through what that process will look like. Um, a lot of our students have been asking who, how do they know who their advisor is? When you log on to Starfish, it'll actually link who your advisor is and where their contact information is. So that's how you can find who your academic advisor is. Please note, even after you meet with your academic advisor, you need to go back in and complete all nine modules. So don't just stop at module five. I say arguably module eight includes the most important information for you all. So information on your health insurance, dining, parking, bookstore, accessibility resources, the learning commons, caps, and so much more. So please take time to complete all nine modules. Um, a frequent question that we receive is who should be completing the orientation canvas course? The student should be the one that's completing the orientation canvas course. And when you're attending your appointment with your academic advisor, the student should be the one that is attending the appointment with the academic advisor. I know personally for me, when I was meeting with my advisor, what worked best for me was sitting down with my mom and my dad prior to orient, uh, prior to the meeting with my advisor and coming up with a list of questions that we both had. So when I went to my appointment with my advisor, I was already prepared with questions that I did have and I was able to meet with them personally one on one so that they're able to get to know me better. Clayton, did you have anything to add regarding this? Uh, the only thing I'll add is an echo of what you just said, that this meeting is really important to establish a relationship between the student and their academic advisor. Um, that's going to be a relationship that's absolutely vital to them over the next five years. Um, so it's, it is quite important that, yes, game plan with your student, create that list of questions and goals, but make sure it's the student who is meeting with the academic advisor when the time comes. Perfect. So next we'll move on into our student recommended must haves. Um, so we have gone through our current students and asked them what is the most important information they need and specifically what items do they need to have in hand as they start their college journey. So we're gonna run through those pretty quick for you. Arguably one of the most important ones in our first category is that laptop. We do have a required laptop and the specific specifications for that can be found on our website. Honestly, the fastest way to go there is just College of Engineering and Applied Science at University of Cincinnati computer requirements and you'll have an instant list right there. Very important to note for those of you in our civil engineering, architectural engineering or construction management programs, we do have specific recommendations for you. Otherwise, those recommendations for the rest of the majors are covered in our general college ones. In addition to that laptop, some very important things to be included. Some really quality headphones that include a microphone, a flash drive. Eight gigabytes is more than plenty of students. Um, there are certainly students that want more than that, but truly eight gigabytes is more than you need. You'll also need a wireless computer mouse or just a wired mouse, but it's very important to do that, especially with some of our modeling programs. Using your trackpad will be almost impossible to do. So make sure you have that separate mouse that you can work with. Also important, it's good, great to have a calculator. Um, as Costina mentioned earlier, our calculus course is taught without the use of a calculator, so you will not be allowed to use it there. But for, for some of your other programs and other classes, you'll take a calculator will be your best friend. Moving into our next category for professional items and clothing, suit and a professional attire. Um, so students, during your first year, you will go through our co-op class, and part of that is attending our co-op career fair. Um, you do have to have your professional attire for that. It is required. Um, so parents, if you are looking for a really great graduation gift for your student, a professional suit or professional attire of any kind is a excellent choice for that. Um, something that makes them feel comfortable, but confident and look their best. In addition to that, I always recommend really great dress shoes to go with that. Um, for more practical reasons, we also recommend rain boots and galoshes. If you are not overly familiar with Cincinnati, it rains here. It rains here a good bit. So you want some really great, excellent shoes to make sure your feet keep dry and you're not prevented from going out. Along that same line, a high quality rain jacket or small umbrella that you could collapse down into a smaller um, size. Those are really great and excellent tools to have around campus. Also a professional portfolio. Um, students during that co-op career fair and as you kind of progress through your college years, you're going to want a professional 
perf portfolio to hold your resume. Um, there's no faster way to stand out in a crowd in not the best way than to have a paper folder for your resume during that co-op career fair. So make sure you have that professional leather bound portfolio. Uh, we have some available through our bookshop, but there's a lot of different options online as well for you to order that. Mom and dad's out there. Uh, this is also a really great uh, graduation gift for your students as well. And definitely an underrated but highly valued uh, item within this list is proper sunglasses. While it does rain, we also have lots of sunshine and a beautiful campus. Um, so make sure you have some good sunglasses to kind of have around for you as well. Moving into our final category, we have different residence hall items and miscellaneous items that our students have collected for you. Uh, number one on that list is a bath towel. Also make sure it's not just one bath towel. Um, you do need to have more than one of those students. Trust me, you do not want to be caught with a dirty bath towel and in need of it. So make sure you have at least two with you. Some students will go even for three. Um, personal recommendation along this line with your bath towel, make sure it's not just a plain white towel. It is very easy to confuse that. Many students opt to go with just a plain white towel. So any other color combination, maybe it has a blue stripe on it, maybe you have a gray towel, maybe you have a red towel, something that makes it easy to identify as yours so you're not ended up confusing it with someone else's. Also very important is to make sure you have shower shoes and a shower caddy. That makes your trip to the bathroom very easy and very efficient. So other uh, recommended items from our students, a hair dryer, a good water bottle, Tupperware, eating utensils to keep in your room. Also to have some cleaning supplies in your room. So Clorox wipes, a duster. Uh, I know I myself use Clorox wipe quite often. It just feels good to have a clean room and that's always very convenient. Uh, there's brooms and vacuums available through your dorm systems. So you can also rent those out as needed. Also keeping a small first aid kit available for little small scrapes. Uh, Band-aids, those are really helpful to have in your hall as well, so you don't have to trek down all the way to health services if you're in need of something as simple as a Band-aid. Uh, quality laundry hamper or bag is definitely important. Uh, because of the dorm systems, many students will have to sometimes carry their laundry up and down stairs, so something that has wheels or is very easy to uh, carry is very important as well. Planners. I cannot stress enough, and I believe Costina would echo this as well, that planners are one of the best resources to keep you prepared and on track with your coursework. There is a free one available at the UC Bookstore, but students, you cannot just own a planner, you must also use that planner. So take the time to write in your assignments, put in dates available ahead of time to be like, I need to have this stage of my project done or this stage of my paper prepared at this point. Planners will be one of the best resources to use. And our final list, uh, comfy room items. Sleep is one of the most important things to ensure your success in college. Make sure you get really high quality sleep by doing what you need to do to feel comfortable. So if that means a really high quality pillow, get it. If it means particular bedding, go for that. Your favorite blanket from home, personal scents that you know help relax you and keep you prepared and ready. Um, those things are absolutely necessary. Um, you know, a pillow pet, anything like that that helps you get the best sleep possible. We strongly recommend you make sure you include that in your residence hall list. Costina, are there other things that I missed out on or common questions in this area that we should address? Yes, absolutely. So the very first question is, can they buy the laptop from the bookstore? Great question. So we do have a laptop available at the bookstore, but it does not meet the College of Engineering and Applied Science specific requirements. Um, so we do have a recommended model that you can find on that same list of the requirements, but it is not a model that's currently at the UC bookstore. And you'll purchase it directly through the Dell website. It's just a heads up there. Clayton, um, does the software typically come already loaded on these laptops? Great question. Uh, so usually no. Um, that is something that you will usually find and purchase after the fact. We recommend you wait until you get to campus though before you try and purchase that. Um, nine times out of ten we will offer or have access to a very very heavily discounted uh, software program. So you don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on something that you can get through us for about five dollars. So make sure you wait on that. Um, also, all of our campus computers will have all of the programs uh, that you may need. So there are certainly programs that you will have plenty of access to without needing to personally purchase it. Thank you. And then finally, what size are the beds? Great question. Um, so I believe, Cassina, you may know the specific distance, but they are twin extra long beds. Yeah, um, and that is 80 inches. <laughs> 
yes, 80 inches. There we go. But yes, twin extra long beds. Um, it's a, about half the width of a queen, but the same distance or length as a queen, if that helps for frame of reference. But definitely make sure your sheets and pe pillows and blankets fit that size. I never knew that's how it was measured. Hmm. Roughly. Well, it's, it's not always perfect, but... All right, moving into housing itself for the fall. Um, there are a couple updates that we wanna make sure we start off with. Um, so commonly asked, will there be housing in the fall? Yes, President Pinto's email on June 11th, you can find copies of that on our website as well. Um, we are committed to having our students um, on campus for the fall in housing. So all students who completed their housing application already can be accommodated. Uh, if you have not yet filled out your housing application, but you would like to, you will be added to a wait list. Make sure you continue to monitor your email. Um, we're estimating that near the end of June is when the details about how assignment processes and room selection slots will be announced. That is not the specific day you are picking, but it will be how that process works and your time. You can expect the room selection itself to take place in July. Uh, we are waiting further details from our housing office on how that'll work in the specific timing. So remember to keep an eye towards your email. And do during this time, make sure that your housing application is complete, your fees are deposited or submitted, your roommate group is verified and your preferences updated. All of this is vital information. Um, that is the best thing to do right now is to make sure that everything is prepared so that when the announcements come out and your time is verified, you are completely ready for that. If you do continue to have questions or concerns about that, we recommend you contact our university housing team directly. Um, so you can see on the screen right here, their phone number along with their email, either option is available. Um, they are actively monitoring these channels to make sure that they are responding to these questions and concerns as quickly as they come in. You can also find, um, more details at the housing website, so www.uc.edu backslash campus life backslash housing and apply. With move-in dates, um, very important to note that the tentative move-in schedule is going to be through August 17th through the 20th. Um, this is scheduled by your residential community or your resident hall. So each student is given a window of time during that day based upon where they will be living. Students and families, it is so important do not show up on the day that is not for you. Nothing will be prepared for it. It will cause immense confusion for everyone. And the day runs much smoother as long as everyone's showing up on the appropriate day because we have so many resources in place for a specific movement. Going into the details a little bit more about the fall, um, fall semester classes will start on Monday, August 24th. The last day of fall semester classes will be Wednesday, December 2nd. Following that, we will have our final exams that run from December 3rd through the 8th. This is new this year in response to um, the COVID situation, but all activities post Thanksgiving break will be online. For the fall semester, our teaching and learning will include three different options. That will be an in-person, an online, or an hybrid option. So. Everything is being done to ensure that our students are still receiving a quality education, but also maintaining their safety. Um, so we highly recommend reviewing the following links. Um, this is gonna return to you more information about how the return to campus is working for our fall semester, what the public health, health initiatives and safety protocols are, and what our facial coverings and social distancing guidelines will be. Um, so this is, a, I know a lot of information, but very important information about how our housing and fall semesters work. And Casino, what common questions do we often field about this? The first one, which is a fun one, is Clayton, how do you request to lift your bed? Ah, very good question. So the lofting procedure. Um, so the lofting procedure is going to be through your campus assignment process. Um, so that has not gone out yet, but students, you will receive an email from the housing team when that comes out, and it'll list also the different options for lofting. So I believe there are currently three different lofting options that you can go through. Uh, no lofting, partial lofting, or full lofting. Um, so depending on your height and how you want to structure your room, uh, that's handled through that application. Clayton, how many people can help me during move-in? My parents, my siblings, my entire crew? Very good question. Um, so information about the move-in process is still being coordinated between the housing team and our campus safety, um, because again, we are wanting to make sure everyone is remaining healthy. Um, further information about that will be released as we near our deadlines. Um, so certainly in the past, we've had kind of an 
open position on that, but we are going to make sure that we are keeping everyone, including our guests and families, healthy that time. So again, be on the lookout for further information from the housing team and our public health group. How do you know if you are in the ELCs, the Engineering Living Learning Communities? Ah, yes. Um, so you should have received an email already welcoming you to the Engineering Living Learning Community. Um, that would be in your email. If you are not sure if you've received that email or have questions about that, feel free to reach out to us and we can help find that answer for you. Um, you can do that either by reaching out to the housing group or to Costina, Alex, or myself. Perfect. And then last but not least, if a student ends up with all online classes, can they stay at home? Very important question during this time. Uh, so yes, we are trying to be as flexible as possible. We understand there have been some pretty intense changes for everyone's situation. So if you have filled out the housing application and already confirmed, but realize now that maybe the better fit would be for you to start at home, uh, we are trying to be as respectful of that as possible. So yes, it does require that you reach out to the housing team though, and communicate that with them as soon as you make that final decision. Uh, so really nine times out of 10, the best thing to do is just be in constant contact with us. Let us know your situation and what you need to be successful. We're going to keep on going to books, my favorite topic. Um, I know many of you are really excited for fall semester. You're really excited to hit the books and start studying. But before that, let's talk about how you can get your books. So when you're looking at starting to prepare for your fall classes on your syllabus, most often your professors will list what books are required for that class. Before this, I do recommend waiting until your first day of class to see if you'll actually utilize the book or if it's just there as a reference or a resource book. So that's a really good thing to clarify with your professor before going and purchasing it. Next, you'll wanna figure out if you would prefer your books to be electronic or a hard copy. Um, personally for me, it really depended on what the class was, whether I liked a hard copy or if I liked the book on my laptop. So figure out what works best for you. From there, before you go and jump into buying it, I want you all to look into your library and look online first to see if you're able to find it either through the library or through the online, AKA Google. Um, most often during my undergrad, I was able to find my textbooks online for free as a PDF, um, especially using our library. So it's a great resource to use. Next, I would look into renting it if you're not able to find it online or at our library, which I would be very surprised if you can't find it at online or your library. If you're renting your textbook, this is typically significantly cheaper than buying your textbook. You can either rent the textbooks either through our bookstore, Chegg, retail stores, Amazon, half price books, you name it. Um, most often the places will let you rent it. And then finally, worst comes to worst, or if you truly, truly think you wanna buy your textbooks, you can go and buy it. Um, I will personally say from my experience, my first year, I thought I needed to buy all my textbooks brand new because I thought I was gonna keep it for the rest of my life. Um, I spent around $700 on textbooks my first year, and then I barely used my textbooks. My second year, I either found them online or I rented them and I spent roughly about $50. So it's definitely a great place to save money is when it comes to your textbooks. After you get your textbooks, make sure you have it organized. So make sure you know what textbooks are for what classes. Um, that's sometimes easier said than done. And then make sure you know what books to grab for class, depending on what day your classes are. Excellent. So we're now gonna talk a little bit more about what the first day of class looks like, how to prepare for that, and how to go through that first day. So the day before, we recommend finding out where your classrooms are and at what time they are. Um, so that's gonna be avail available through your Canvas login. Uh, you'll find a location listed for it and the times the class are happening. So all of that information is always available to you. Um, but going through and mapping out kind of how long it needs to walk there, um, or what time you need to log in, whatever that case may be, but take the time to do that so you're not caught in a surprise. Next, we recommend you organize what books and materials you'll need. So there's no reason to carry around a book that you only need on Thursdays if it's a Tuesday. Um, so there's no sense to that. Also, just making sure you've prepared by reading whatever material you have, um, all of those things. Also very important, make sure you eat a hearty dinner, a healthy dinner. <laughs> $5 of Taco Bell does not count as a hearty dinner that's healthy. Make sure you <laughs> that's are- debatable. Debatable, yes, but I'll, I'll side on the side of caution. But make sure you have you know, 
a good meal so that you are fully prepared for the day. Next stage of that is making sure you have really great sleep beforehand and set an alarm. Uh, I myself am one of those people, I am probably the worst for it, but I set about four alarms in the morning. Do whatever it is you need to make sure that you wake up on time, but go to bed earlier so that you have that time to get that restful sleep. This kind of goes back to some of our earlier messaging and make sure you have the materials as well, your pillow, your pillow pet, a scent, whatever it is to help you get relaxed and ready to sleep. Also important, review that syllabus to see if you need to bring anything to class with you on that first day. Um, that may change from day to day sometimes, so reviewing the syllabus will always help you be prepared for that. Another very important lesson is to charge your laptops. Uh, there's nothing more awkward than showing up to uh, campus on your first day and you spent all night watching some Netflix show that while it was a really great show, it killed your laptop battery and now you're stuck with a dead laptop on your first day. So make sure you're starting off on the right foot. When it comes to the day of, make sure you've planned ahead to give yourself enough time to get ready. You want to be able to have a breakfast, get showered, get your first day of school clothes on, and physically get to campus or logged on on time. Another great part of that is eating a hearty and healthy breakfast. Um, again, Taco Bell does not count as breakfast all the time. Sometimes I will say in a pinch, it's not bad. Uh, but whatever you need to do to start the day off right, we recommend a hearty breakfast. Getting to class on time, sitting towards the front so your professors know who you are, can put a face to the name, and also to breathe easy, students. It is going to be syllabus week, so ease your way into the start of things. We are not going to hammer you super hard that first week because we understand you're still adjusting. But at the same time, it's also on you to ask the questions you need answers to. Uh, your professors, as smart as they are, are not mind readers. So if you don't know the answer to something or have a question, please volunteer that question. I guarantee you someone else in the room will have the same question, likely almost everyone. So feel free to ask that question. Don't be embarrassed by it. And it'll also help your professor understand that you are engaged and listening to what they have to say. Costina, what kind of commonly asked questions can I help answer? When and how will we receive the syllabus so we know what to expect when it comes to classes? Ah, uh, yes, that is an excellent question. So students, on your Canvas course, so that online module, that's where you will find the syllabus. It's usually available at least a week in advance of your class, um, sometimes earlier, uh, but usually a week beforehand. That is going to be really one of your best resources going into that first week, understanding what materials you will actually need, how the structure of class is, and often you could go ahead and put in the most important dates for future tests and projects. Most of that is usually included on your syllabus, and if you have any questions, you are prepared to ask it in, qua in class and help out not only yourself, but your fellow classmates who may not have taken the time to read that syllabus and be unprepared. We're going to keep on going and let's talk about study resources. I think the biggest question I always get is, Costina, what recommendations do you have for an incoming first year student? My biggest recommendation and something that I see students is like the biggest downfall for them is that CS students, engineering students are either A, we don't know how to ask for help, or B, we're really stubborn and we don't want to ask for help. Um, please be better than I was. That was exactly me during my first year. I, was, I would rather be stubborn and struggle than go and ask for help So for some weird reasons. UC does a really good job to make sure that you have a ton of resources at your fingertips to make sure that you do succeed during your time here at UC. The first thing that we have is our engineering living learning communities as well as our peer study groups. So the ELLCs are floors dedicated to first year engineering students. So all of our students are taking the exact same classes with the exact same professors. So you have the exact same homework. Um, it's a great resource to use. On top of that, we have our professors who come in on the weekends to have dinner with you, our tutors that come in throughout the week to help you with your homework, and then advisors as well. So it's a great resource to utilize. Our next thing is our learning commons. And as a part of our learning commons, it includes a wide variety of resources within that area. It's located within French West. And inside that building, it has everything from your success skills workshop, your academic writing center, peer tutoring, math, which is math and science center, study tables, um, and way, way more. So please utilize that. 
as a CES student, we actually have our own CES tutoring center. It's located on the eighth floor of Baldwin Hall slash Rhodes Hall, the buildings are connected. Um, but we have our personal tutors, especially for that engineering design thinking course to help you there. During the engineering design thinking course, you're gonna learn a lot of new things that you most likely did not use in high school. So items like Python, MATLAB, VBA, LabVIEW. If none of these make sense to you, that is absolutely okay. Drop by the CS Tutoring Center and our TAs who actually grade for that class are there to help you. The last resource, um, which is something that I was really nervous about using, is professor's office hours, recitation sessions, as well as SI sessions. So your professors are there to support you. I know during high school, it didn't feel that way because my, my teachers in high school were like, college is huge and um, your professors will know who you are and they won't be there to support you. That is not the case whatsoever. Each of your professors will dedicate open office hours where their door is open and you can just walk in and ask questions for them. Um, personally, for me, many of my professors actually shared with us their cell phone numbers. So if we have questions, if we don't feel like emailing them, we can go ahead and text them. So they are there to make sure you succeed. Recitations are required um, sessions for you to attend. Typically what that is, is that is a recitation that meets once a week that reviews the material that you've learned throughout the week and you take quizzes during recitation. So please make sure you attend those. Those are required as a part of your classes. SI sessions are not required. Those are supplemental instruction sessions. So SI sessions are sessions that where students who've already taken the class, they are going in and they are retaking that class again to create study materials, practice tests, practice quizzes for you. Now I realize and I understand that all these resources seem like a lot, you are not expected to go to every single one of these. What I would recommend is I would recommend creating a study group and then taking turns going to different things. So for example, for me, I used to always go, I always used to be the one that goes to the SI sessions and my friends would be the ones that are going to professor office hours, going to the tutoring center, and then we would meet once a week to go over all the materials that we learned and to study together. So make sure you utilize your resource that way. Clayton, did I cover anything? If I am I missing anything? We do have a couple common questions that we like to get answered. So there seems to be a lot of uh, emphasis on com on residential students, but what about our commuter students? What kind of resources do we have for them? Is there an ELLC equivalent for commuters? That is a great question. So the resources for two, three, and four, you are able to use that as a commuter student. Um, for the engineering living learning communities, so long as you know someone that is within the ELCs and that can get you into the resident hall, you are welcome to go in and join those events as well. Um, again, the ELC activities and things like that are not required for those that are not in the ELCs, but so long as you know someone who's a part of that community, you are welcome to go and join during the tutoring centers and the activities as well. During the engineering design thinking course, there's actually breakout sessions as a part of that course where students meet in typically groups of six or eight with a TA and they go over things like tutoring, success skills, things like co-op, things like making sure you're in the right engineering discipline for you. So that's kind of like a quote unquote learning community for you that is built into the engineering, uh, engineering design thinking course. Perfect. So another question we have is do tutors cost anything? So that is the kicker. Tutors are absolutely free if you use these resources that are listed on here, especially through the Learning Commons where they have peer tutoring. You can either do one-on-one -on -one peer tutoring, you can do drop-in peer tutoring, or you can schedule a peer tutoring session. They are there to make sure that they're there to help support you and encourage you throughout your time. If you do decide to use a third-party resource or a resource that's outside of UC, that might cost money. And I typically don't recommend that. I would recommend just using the resources that we have available for you that are free or ready. Excellent, and that's everything we needed to cover. Perfect. So now that we've covered our academic resources, we also want to talk more about what some of our campus resources are. Um, obviously, you are more than just an academic student. You are a part of our UC community, so we want to tell you more about what things are available to you. Um, so starting off with our rec center, that's definitely a really great resource. So every student has free membership to that. Um, there's a lot of really great things packed into this membership. So you get full access to our gym, there are group classes available, there's pools, uh, there's also a hot tub, and we have a full climbing wall, uh, along with open courts for basketball, for volleyball, whatever it is you'd like to play. 
We do offer a free orientation to the gym floor and to the equipment. Um, so if you are not previously used to going to a gym and you honestly have walked in and been like, I don't even understand what half of these machines do, please ask. Um, that is what the staff is there for. They are more than happy to walk through what each of the workouts are, how to properly use them. So you are making sure you're getting a good workout in, but more importantly, doing it safely. And they're welcome to do that if you need a refresher. So if you walk in that first time and you're like, I've completely forgotten, uh, that staff patrols the uh, floor so they are making sure that you are doing everything safely. There's also available um, personal training and nutrition training uh, slash advising, and that's available for free for our students. So if you have certain fitness and health goals that you'd like a little bit of assistance with, feel free to ask their team. They love being able to do that. There also are a couple premium classes available at member prices. Um, so that really brings down the cost to you. So if you have always wanted to learn how to properly box, um, that is one of the options available for you. Uh, so that's definitely something to fully explore as you kind of go through. We also have a number of other physical and mental health centers. Um, so a lot of this is anchored to our student wellness center. Um, these are uh, trained individuals that are health educators. We also have a health hut and newsletter. The health hut is kind of a traveling tent that has different um, focuses for each location. So they're going to give you access in kind of a quicker way to what is available through the student wellness center. So if you're curious about it, find that health hut, get a better idea of what's available to you. And they also share newsletters about different community health options, um, different things to do as a student going through college and long-term health habits to start right away. We also have our CAPS uh, system, so that's the Counseling and Psychological Services. Um, so they are gonna cover things about managing stress, um, if you have depression, if there's something traumatic that happens in your life and you need to talk to a professional about it, we have that resource available for our students and we encourage you to take full advantage of it. Um, they also do a lot of things uh, that are not on the, you know, as direct intervention, but also long-term things about how to meditate and properly think through things, how to manage your stress in a long-term healthy way. All of those services are available. We also have the university health systems and a variety of support groups available. Um, so we are quite fortunate that within Cincinnati, we actually have five different hospital systems within about a mile of campus, um, one of which is our Cincinnati Health Center. Um, so truly you have full access to trained medical doctors, uh, pharmacies, um, anything you might need involving your health, we got you covered on that front. And Kastina, are there questions I can help answer about this that are commonly related to us? So a really quick one, Clayton, do you know what buildings on campus will be available on the, in the fall, like library, the rec center, et cetera? Great question to ask. Um, so that is definitely part of the ongoing discussion uh, between all of our different campus partners about how to properly open these in a safe way. Um, so we are still awaiting final information on that, uh, but we are going to do our best to make sure that these are as fully available as possible while maintaining the safety of those getting in, uh, into these places. Um, so likely expect they're still gonna be bound to our social distancing requirements and also our facial coverings, but we're gonna try and make sure that these are as fully available as possible. Next, we're gonna talk about our Bearcat Cash. So as a student at the University of Cincinnati, you will get your own student ID. Um, we call that our Bearcat card. On your Bearcat card, it actually doubles up kind of like a debit card where you're able to load money on there and you're able to use that at a wide variety of locations on and off campus. I believe currently right now we can use that at over 400 locations that you can use it as. Things like for your laundry, vending machines, restaurants, you name it, you most likely can use it there. Um, if you're not able to use all your money for that semester, it does roll on to the next semester, so don't worry there. And depending on what your meal plan is for all first year students that are living on campus, you have to do the unlimited meal plan. And that unlimited meal plan actually comes with cash already loaded onto your Bearcat card. Your Bearcat card can also be linked to a PNC account if you wanna deposit money on there. We actually have a PNC account on campus, which is typically the banking that we recommend for our students. All right, so now let's taco about food. Sorry, that's a terrible pun. Um, so we have a, a lot of different local food deals and campus meal themes that we like to advertise. Um, so we're just gonna kind of walk through some of the highlights of that. So Market Point uh, is one of the largest um, campus meal options that we have. Um, so they run a weekly deal 
so there's Milkshake Monday, Tender Tuesday. Uh, Tender Tuesday is definitely one of the most popular options. Um, and these are not just some pre-frozen tiny little chicken nugget thing. This is a true proper chicken tender and about 10 different sauces to pick from. Uh, so this is always a popular day in uh, Market Point. We also do Wing Wednesday, Surf and Turf Thursdays, and there's a smoothie option on Fridays. Um, so obviously this is more than just what's available. There are a number of options available as well. So our different dining centers include Market Point at Sadal, uh, there's Center Court, there's Stadium View Cafe, and there's also OTG or On the Green, which is our newest campus dining option. If you feel like exploring a little bit more of Cincinnati and kind of getting off that campus a little bit, we have some really excellent local places that are really close to us. Um, so there's Half Price Mac and Cheese on Mondays. Um, that's available at Keystone. That is literally one street over from campus. There's also a $5 Fridays deal through Smoothie King, Half Price Sushi through uh, Izen's Bento, and Half Price Sushi through Mr. Sushi. Um, Definitely really recommend the Mr. Sushi personally. I am a big fan of theirs and also a frequent customer. They have a lot of my money. 50% um, off on UC game days through Papa John's. And we also have a really fun red strikeout deal through La Rosa's. So if they meet the number of strikeouts they're going for, then La Rosa's uh, just ask that you bring in your ticket within a week of that and you get a free small personal pizza. Casino, what kind of questions can I answer? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Clayton, is there a dining hall that you recommend for fruit and more healthy eating? Good question. So we certainly have those options available at each of our locations. Um, I would say, though, that my personal recommendation would be OTG or On the Green. Um, they have a really, really great setup um, for a vegetarian and those who have food sensitivities or allergies. Um, so there's a lot of really great healthy options and variety of options for students that have any kind of particular restriction on what they can and can't eat. Uh, and it's the newest one, so everything's real fresh and new, so uh, it has a, a fun feel to it. Great. And now we want to talk a little bit more about some of our student events, so other things to take part of as a member of our UC family. So on campus, we certainly have quite a few things that we go through. Uh, that we put on for our students. Number one resource for finding those is through our UC PAC. Um, they have social media accounts to follow um, or a listserv that you can be a part of that updates you um, periodically with all the different events and goings ons of campus. Um, obviously, we do have a number of sporting uh, programs here. So UC sporting events are a very popular way for students to get involved, have some fun, hang out with their friends. Um, so football, baseball, volleyball, basketball for sure, um, lots of different options available. We encourage you to take part in those. We're also very fortunate to have the Conservatory of Music um, here on UC's campus, and so we have a concert stage performances every semester, um, truly some fantastic performers, and you get access to those completely free as a student. There's also the DAP annual fashion show. That's a really fun night every year um, to show off a lot of the what the students have been working on and kind of the future trends in fashion. And we're also very lucky because the FC Cincinnati um, soccer club or football, depending on how you particularly view it, uh, but they play their games actually in Nippert Stadium. Um, so we have really easy access to those games. Those are super exciting and fun. Uh, so we're really lucky to have those. But as I've said before on a couple of things, you know, we are not just limited to what's on campus. Um, we're very much a part of Cincinnati and Cincinnati is a thriving place. So there's lots of really great resources uh, in the surrounding community as well. Um, UC PAC also lets you know about what's happening in the city itself. So there's almost always a festival going on each week uh, or weekend. So lots of things to see. Some key highlights though that we like to point out for you. Ice skating, ice skating on Fountain Square during the more winter months. Um, that's a very popular place to go and a lot of fun. Um, the Cincinnati Zoo is actually walking distance from campus. Um, if you stand actually on the engineering side of campus, you can see the top of the elephant house. So it's really, really close and really exciting. Uh, that is the number one zoo in the country right now. And we're pretty excited to be a part of that. We also bring in um, local comedians to Cincinnati's area that put on some really fantastic show. Um, there's always movies happening. Uh, we actually have a movie theater on campus uh, that our students can access for really, really cheap. And 
what would we be without our professional sports? So we do have the Reds baseball team. Uh, there's also the Bengals. Uh, we also have a hockey team here. So there are plenty of ways to get off campus and still enjoy a lot of what's happening in the world. All right, and we are nearing the end. Um, so what you can do now to really get ahead. First and foremost, like I mentioned earlier, please complete that Bearcat Bound Orientation Canvas course, all nine modules. Again, all nine modules. Decide if you wanna do on-campus parking. Uh, we do allow our first year students to park their cars on campus. The two garages that I typically recommend is University Avenue, Campus Green, and then if you ask Clayton, Clayton recommends Woodside Garage. All of those are fairly close to the engineering complex. Um, the furthest one is University Avenue, and that's roughly about a seven minute walk. And that's if you're my height, which is five feet. Figure out your meal plan. So if you're living on campus, that meal plan that you must have the unlimited. And if you're a commuter, there's different plans available for you. Make sure you learn how to utilize your Bearcat card and where you can use it. Please do not lose your Bearcat card during your first year. Just a heads up, if you end up losing your Bearcat card and you need a new one, it does cost $35 to get a new Bearcat card. So try not to lose it. If you haven't been doing this yet, please make sure you use, you organize, you set up your UC email. That is where the main communication will be coming from when it comes to your advisors, your professors, housing. They're gonna be switching over and using your UC email. If you want to do something during the summer, take time to learn your student ID. So that student ID is called your M number. You're going to use your M number mostly when, when you're taking your final exams, you need to fill in your M number. Or when you're meeting with your academic advisor, they use your M number to look you up for your student accounts online. Like Clayton mentioned, please practice using a planner and see what works best for you. So what that means is do you like a handwritten planner, so a physical one? Or would you rather use one that is online? My favorite one is a Google Calendar. So see which one works best for you. If you end up using the Google Calendar one, please know that you're able to export your Canvas due dates onto your Google Calendar. So you don't have to physically add those yourself. Over the summer, we do recommend that you brush up on your math and physics skills. Um, I know for many of you, your senior year was moved online for the second half. So if you feel like you didn't get a good grasp on your math and physics and you want a refresher, I typically recommend Khan Academy, but if you want some more links, please feel free to reach out to us. A lot of students have been reaching out about what else they can do to prepare for their first year. We would recommend learning a coding language. Um, the most popular one that you'll be using for your first year is Python, and Python is free, and there's free courses online for Python. The ones that I recommend is Udacity, so U-D-A-C-I-T-Y. If you need the direct link to that, just feel free to reach out to us. If you're looking at organizations, get an idea of what you want to get involved in your first year. Campus Link is a great way for you to start researching what organizations we have on campus and what you participate on. And then last but not least, banking. Figure out what banking you want to use. As we mentioned earlier, the most popular one for our students on campus is PNC Bank. Outside of all of this, make sure you're learning how to use your Catalyst account. Your Catalyst will show you everything from your bill, see what classes you're taking, that's how you're gonna register for fall classes. So be familiar with Catalyst as well. Clayton, did you have any other things that you wanted to mention on this slide? I think the only thing I would recommend is just one more time, what are those garage recommendations for our students? It is University Avenue, Campus Green, and Woodside Garage. All righty. I think we have reached the end. So thank you all for tuning in. We really appreciate it. We hope this was beneficial for you. As always, follow us on social media, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, we always keep those up to date there. Yeah, if you have any additional questions from this, we know we threw a lot at you, but um, we are here waiting to answer any questions you may have. So feel free to give our office a call. You can see the number below, or you can send us an email. Um, both options are great, although right now email is probably something we can respond faster to. Uh, but do keep in communication. Don't feel like you have to figure out everything on your own. That's what we are here for, and we are here to support you through it. Mm -hmm. And then please know for all incoming first year students, if you want to meet with us one-on-one -on -one virtually, we do have one-on-one -on -one appointments available as well. So you can reach out to us to schedule that appointment with us. With that being said, we look forward to seeing you in the fall and we hope you stay safe and we hope you stay healthy.